Let's get started this, this morning with Old Habakkuk. Old Habakkuk. When's the last time you read the book of Habakkuk? <laughs> minor prophet. He is a minor prophet. What's interesting about to me about the story of Habakkuk is as a prophet, God's not saying, Hey, Habakkuk, go tell them wretched people what I want them to hear. It's not that kind of story. It's not that kind of prophecy. It's Habakkuk talking to God saying, Hey, what's going on here? And I'm definitely paraphrasing. That's not in there. What's going on here? And God going, giving him an answer. And then Habakkuk saying, Oh, really? <laughs> and then God giving yeah, you have a good answer. We're going to go through this. We might not make it all today, but we're going to go through it. And as we're going through the book of Habakkuk, I would like you to think, gee, I never thought I could actually <laughs> find myself in the book of Habakkuk. But you will. You will. So <laughs> Is a discussion where he asks the question, and God gives the answers, and brings Habakkuk to a place of humbleness. Are you prepared to be humble? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stand by. Stand by. <coughs> Key for keys, uh, scripture this morning in this one is How long, O Jehovah, how long, God, must I cry for help and you do not hear? You do not hear. Now, and right there, just in this, just in this, you could probably find yourself and go, you know, I've been asking for something for a long time. Think about Brad's story. <coughs> been talking to God for a long time, but it wasn't, it wasn't like, Brad, what have you done? No, it's not like that. You know, sometimes the message is loud and clear, but sometimes God says, not yet. Not yet. How long, God, must I go through this? How long, God, must I have these aches, pains, this, this physical ailment? Hmm, I think I've heard this before. Lord, please take this thorn from my side. My grace is sufficient for you? Does that sound familiar? Hmm. Well, we're going to read, we're going to actually read over the next couple of weeks, and there's no way to do this in one day, the book of Habakkuk. And I don't normally just read an entire book as a sermon, but there's so much, so many jewels in this. And in so many places, you're going to come up with a mirror boop, right in front of you. And you're going to go, okay, that's me. I found myself again. And at some point, you know, we should put little runners down so you can pick your feet up off the floor. And I should be going. <laughs> Like when I was reading it, when I was studying this, God reading me through this, I had to pick my feet off the floor from getting stepped on. Because God humbled me in what I was reading. And I just so I'm just so thankful for God to lead me through somewhere where I thought I would never be. Oh, sure, you pick a scripture here, something really, really good, sweet scripture, I hear an error to have a cup or something else. For God say, I want the whole story. And the people will hear the whole story. So buckle up. And prepare to be humble. We're going to start off Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 1. Are you buckled up? Here we go. The oracle that Habakkuk the prophet received. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed. Injustice never prevails. The wicked him in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Okay, I don't know which community you live in. I don't know if you read the news, listen to the news, wait for the <coughs> little text thing, the ghosty thing to come up, you know, wow. however all that works, how you get your news, but you are going to hear, today in Seattle, someone was shot. Today in Mount Vernon, some, there was a, a, um, a robbery, 
to David Caesar Woolley, there was a carjacking. Did it? And you're going to go, how come this just keeps going? Or how about my house got broken into? And they could not catch the guy. Oh! Or how about this person wronged me? And there's no justice to this. Or how about that government? You know what they did to me? Or my co-worker? It's away with everything and nothing comes out. Woe is me. Oh, is that three-letter word? Woe? Keep that in your pocket. Stand by for that. We might not even see it for a couple of Woe. Not like whoa. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Do you find yourself in things happening around you? And do you call out to God? All these things are happening. And you like roll up the shutter or the window and you stick your ear out. Hmm. Silence. Or it just keeps happening. And you question, God, why is this still happening? Why? Why? Oh, why me? Well, have a cup, you, you notice? He didn't say me. Interesting. Did he, you notice he hasn't dialed a friend yet? He hasn't called on a buddy to say, what do you think? He's talking to God. He's talking to God. And in that, just that, if there's any lesson or any thought that I want you to come out with today, Habakkuk is requesting, petitioning, asking, pouring out his heart to God. What we've been talking about the last few weeks is faith and trust. Believing the one who is believable and who is trustworthy. That is God. Habakkuk has no doubts of belief in believing in God. He's relating with God. He's saying, how is this happening? How, why is this going on, God? So in that, where do you put your trust? Where do you direct your petitions, your complaints, your wants, needs? Is it this way? Or is it this way? Who can help on earth that God has not sent? Who is going to lift you up that God has not sent? Or convicted to go? Hmm. If they're not of God, they're not of God. Does that make sense? Let's continue on here. God answers. Look! <laughs> Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I'm going to do something in your days that you would not believe. Look among the nations, observe, be astonished, wonder. Because I'm going to do in you something in your days you were not you would not believe if you were told. How would you? Has that ever happened to you? Have you ever you know somebody told you? She <laughs> all ain't gonna believe this. Wow! I just saw me a thirty point buck. Oh. <laughs> you see if you're awake. <laughs> How about if God said? I am going to astonish you. I am going to make you wonder and be amazed at what I'm about to do. Do you read his word? <laughs> Every time I crack the book, I get astonished, amazed, when I think that he would save a wretch like us. That he would take the time to love me first. And that he would send his son to save me and astonish and amaze. <clears throat> what does Habakkuk, what does God tell Habakkuk? Well, first thing he's going to tell him is that I'm going to take <clears throat> care of things in my way, God's way, in his will, and by his plan. And that's sometimes where we get a little, that's not our plan. Our plan is swift and immediate justice for me now. Right? 
I want it my way or the highway. And God tells you, look, observe, be astonished. And you ain't going to believe this. Let's read. Verse 5. I'm going to read it again through the NIV. Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. <laughs> Which we are. Just saying. We are. I am raising up the Babylonians. And with that, with that, I want you to picture Habakkuk's face doing this. Huh? Hmm? Just picture that face, okay? I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people, who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not their own. They are a feared and dreaded people. They are a law to themselves and promote their own honor. Their horses are swifter than leopards, fiercer than wolves at dusk. Their cavalry gallops headlong, for their horsemen come from afar. They fly like a vulture, sweeping to the bow. They all come bent on violence. Their hordes advancing like a desert wind, and gather prisoners like sand. This is God talking to Habakkuk. They deride kings and scoff their rulers. They laugh at all fortified cities. They build earthen ramps and capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on. Guilty men whose own strength is their God. Do you remember that face? That face? Here's Habakkuk going, Lord, when are you going to rise up and bring some justice to this land? How long do we have to do this? And then you call upon the bully to do it? The meanest dudes in the land, the most lawless, the anti goddess people that there are, huh? You are going to use them to bring justice? Hmm. Let's continue. Habakkuk says, Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Hmm, let's read. Verse 12. O oh Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, we will not die. O oh Lord, you have appointed them to execute judgment. O oh Rock, you have ordained them to punish. Your ill eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent? while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves. You have made men like fish in the sea, like sea creatures that have no ruler. The wicked fool pulls all of them up with hooks. He catches them in its act net. He gathers, gathers them up in his dragon, and he so rejoices in his blood. Therefore, he sacrifices to his net and burns incest to his dragon. For by his neck he lives in luxury and enjoys the choicest foods. He is to keep an empty net. He is to keep on emptying his net, destroying nations without mercy? Habakkuk did not want to hear what God had to say. Have you found yourself yet in this? It's not the answer I was looking for, God. You know I was wanting something else. I had a plan, God. And you're telling me that you're going to do something else? And you know, like I said, it may not come in, in high definition, surround sound, but it may come in something more subtle. It may come in something you're planning to move somewhere and you can't find a house there. But the more place you... This place you're going to move to is the land of milk and honey. Every lawn is green. The streets are clean. Everybody walks around with a smile on their face. I got to live there. But you can't find a place there. The walls are up. It's like somebody shut the gate and you can't get in. But hmm, the place that you can 
before. The place that's readily available is in Hamilton? <laughs> Just throwing that up. It's in Con It's in Cedar Woolley? I don't want to live there. Right? Well, whatever. But why do you put me in a den of iniquity? You know how those people are. Don't we judge people around us? Don't we? We judge communities, mm -hmm. even though there's more churches per corner, that there are good, God-fearing, God-spirit-led people everywhere. But God and God wants you there, but you want to be over here. Because even the ice cream truck is, is, is better over there. It's what I want. And you put me there. Lord, why are you so sad? We do not want to hear what we want. We want to hear what we want to hear and not accept what God tells us. Are we listening? Instead, Habakkuk says, and to paraphrase, in our current language, you got to be kidding. The Babylonians, they stink. I could. I was going to use some other words, but it's not really appropriate. <laughs> they are a horrible people. They're violent. They're going to destroy this place. And that's what you're going to use. For real? Hmm. Let's read chapter two. I love this. This is Habakkuk telling God. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what you will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. <coughs> In other words, I can't believe you're going to do this, and I'm going to stand right here in the wall and listen for your answer. Hmm. <coughs> Anybody else in the Old Testament do this? He smells, it's kind of a fishy story. <laughs> I'm just going to go sit under this bush and wait for you to destroy this place. <coughs> well, thank you for putting this vine over my head, Lord. It was getting awful hot out here. Getting hot out here. Why is this vine burning up and my head starting to scorch? <gasps> oh, Lord, you're humbling me. The end of John. Not his end, but in this do we do that? Do we plant our foot <clears throat> to see Julie Mudd and say, waiting for you to answer me my complaint? What was that? <laughs> it's right. Careful how hard you stomp that foot. That you might get stuck there. I like that. Hmm. 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 What do you think? God, you're too good for them. I can't believe you're going to use them. Hmm. Let's look at our next. But the just shall live by his faith. Let's continue to read. We're going to end it here in just a moment. <coughs> the Lord's answer. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation waits an appointed time. I love that appointed time. <laughs> it's usually not my time. It speaks to, of the end and will not prove false. Anything God says is true and trustworthy and will not prove false. Amen? Stand by. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Remember back a few weeks ago, I, in the song I used, <coughs> in God's time, he will, God will make everything beautiful in its time. In its time. Although it may linger, do not wait. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Verse 4. See, he is puffed up. 
Now, this he he's talking about is really talking about the Babylonian king in reference to all of Babylonia. Okay? So, just want to make sure that's clear as you're reading that. He is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. The righteous shall live by faith in God. So, faith means what? Somebody give me the, the Hebrew the Hebrew definition of faith. Remember? What does it say in the Hebrews 11? 1? Somebody turn it real quick. Isn't it faith is being certain? Certain of uh, what? Come on, Emily, you said it. I know, faith is uh, certain of what you do not see. Certain of what you do not see. You have proof. You have it. It's right here. Faith. God said it. God's proved it. God's going to do it. It will come. But he says, the righteous will live by his faith. Indeed, verse 5, indeed, wine betrays him. Talking about Babylon. He is arrogant and never at rest. Because he is as greedy as the grave, and like death is never satisfied. The greedy, the unrighteous, are content, continually hungry. They will continue to feed this. Do you know that the grave is never satisfied? It is constantly waiting, constantly wanting to be filled. I just want you to sink that in. So you just write that one down. I'd like you to ponder on it this week. We're going to talk more about that. Because he is greedy as the grave and like death is never satisfied, he gathers to himself all of the nations and takes captive of all peoples. Josh, you want to go get... Somebody want to go have Josh go get him? Oh, there you yes. <laughs> He will not all of them will not all of them taunt him with ridicule and scorn. Woe to him who piled up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion. How long will, must this go on? This is God talking. Will not your debtors suddenly arise? Still talking about Babylon. Will not your debtors suddenly arise? Will not will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their victim. And there's the turn of the tide. There's the turn of the tide. At some point, God will destroy Babylon. He's rising them up to do something for him. And then they are to be destroyed. Will not your debtors suddenly arrive? Then you will become their victim. Because you have plundered many nations, the people who are left will plunder you. For you have shed man's blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. Woe to him who builds his realm, realm by unjust gain. To set his nest on high. To escape the clutches of ruin. You have plotted the ruin of many peoples. Shaming your own house. Forfeiting your lives. The stones of the wall will cry out. And the beams of the woodwork will echo it. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by crime. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is not is only fuel for the fire? That the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Let me read that one again. I know I'm getting long-winded here. I want you to listen to this. Verse 14. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. I'm going to step back real quick and read. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. Hmm. Woe to him, verse 15, who gives drink to his neighbors. Pouring, pouring it out from the wineskin till they are drunk, so that he can gaze on their nakedness. You will be filled with shame instead of glory. 
Now it is your turn. Drink and be exposed. The cup of the Lord's right hand is coming around to you, and disgrace will cover your glory. The violence you have done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, and your destruction of animals will terrify you, for you have shed man's blood. You have destroyed lands and cities and everyone in them. And with that, we're going to put a period to it for today. I think we'd end up with another half an hour <laughs> or, or longer. But I want to ask, come on up, music team. Have you found yourself in here anywhere? <coughs> Has that spiritual mirror popped up in front of you? What do you see? Is there, is there something that you want to go to God prayerfully and say, Hey, uh, thanks for the message that you gave Greg. Um, what do we need to fix something here? I'm not living by righteousness. I find myself kind of doing things that the Babylonians are doing. And I'm sorry, Lord, if I'm complaining too much. Lift me up. How can we fix this? And as we're singing this song, which you'll have to skip through a little bit to the invitation song. <laughs> hey, that's well. Oh, that's a good one. That's got music. Give me thy heart. As you're singing this, I've said this before. If you're not willing to actually say what you're going to read. I know this isn't Scripture, but you're here to sing to God. If you are not willing to say to God, I give me thy heart, or I give you my heart, don't do it, please. You open your heart and open your mouth to sing to Him. I mean it. 